from my bad cave. I'm Thomas Galvin, and thank you for joining me on this look back on how I constructed the robot Vincent from Walt Disney Productions' full-length live-action film, The Black Hole. I have been making replica costumes and props from some of my favorite movies and TV shows for over 30 years. They have ranged from the Rocketeer's Rocket Pack, assorted Ghostbuster props, a can of Bat Shark repellent, to a full-scale time machine based on the 1960s sci-fi classic. The fun part is taking something that I made to a convention to be fully appreciated by those who also enjoy the same things I do, and have the pleasure of feeling nostalgic. So why Vincent? Why make him? When it comes to choosing my next project, I have two simple criteria. Does it hold a special place with fans and myself? Is it something unique? I want to make sure the things that I create will be welcomed. When a fan sees me dressed as the Clock King from Batman, the animated series, I know the first thing I'll see is a smile because that show, to this day, is loved by thousands around the world. But the Clock King also fits into my second criteria. Is it unique? When you attend a convention, you're guaranteed to see Batman, the Joker, Harley Quinn, and the Riddler, and likely multiples of each. But the Clock King is one of those C characters whose appearance will get you that, Wow, the Clock King, I never see you! So when it comes to making a science fiction movie robot, you expect to see an R2-D2. But tell me, when have you seen Vincent? The Black Hole was made by Walt Disney Productions and released in the theaters December 1979. Now that was only two years after Star Wars, and I was glued to my TV daily with my head in a galaxy far, far away, because VCRs had only been out for a short while and we had a bootleg copy of Star Wars, and I watched the hell out of it. So you could say my love for sci-fi was closer to obsession. Now mind you, I was only seven when The Black Hole came out. And I was only one! What? No reason to make me feel old, Jessica. As I was saying, Star Wars came out in 1977, and every movie studio was rushing to get their sci-fi action movie out as soon as possible to bank on the popularity, and Disney was no exception. The late 70s and the release of The Black Hole marked the beginning of what would later be known as Disney's Dark Period. The studio was trying to expand beyond the public view of them as only fairy tales, a just-for-children production house. They began to produce edgier, darker movies with hopes to capture the teens to 20 market that Star Wars was raking in. The films released during this time were The Watcher in the Woods, Dragon Slayer, Condor Man, which they should totally remake, Tron, Something Wicked This Way Comes, Return to Oz, and the Black Cauldron. Disney would not start their Renaissance period, the return to fairy tale inspired full length animated features, until 1989 with The Little Mermaid. When it comes to the look of the black hole, most of the credit is given to production designer Peter Ellenshaw. And why not? He is a Disney legend. Ellenshaw began his career with Disney as a matte painter for Treasure Island in 1950 and created the special effects for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea in 1954. He was asked to come out of retirement to work on the Black Hole and receive Academy Award nomination for his visual effects. The design and the miniature of the USS Cygnus is gorgeous and stands out as one of the best spacecraft designs to this day. But what about the robots? Who created them? When it came to design Vincent, Maximilian, and the Sentry robots, Disney did what had always worked for them from the beginning. They hired from within. When Walt wanted to design Disneyland, he didn't hire an architect. He repurposed his animators into theme park engineers and branded them Imagineers. And one of the last Imagineers Walt would hire was George McGinnis. Who? I know. He's not as widely known as Exitensio or Yale Gracie, but George McGinnis is the creative mind behind some of the most iconic Disney attractions. The Mark V and Mark VI monorail vehicles, the Tomorrowland Transit Authority or People Mover vehicles, the rocket sleds for Space Mountain, the tram vehicles for the Backlot Studios Tour. 
Epcot Horizons attraction, he was the show designer. Kilimanjaro Safari vehicles and the Indiana Jones ride vehicles. So it's safe to say the robot designs were in good hands. George McGinnis left a legacy in film and theme park design, passing away in 2017 at the age of 87. The Black Hole is one of those special films. One of the most common comments about the 1979 film is that it is one of Disney's most underrated gems. In the Black Hole, all the special effects were done in camera. The ships were models the size of station wagons. The artists and the visionaries were creating by hand the painstaking special effects involved in every scene of the film. This was still 15 years before Jurassic Park and its extensive use of CGI and film storytelling that would change the industry. As a child, I was captivated by this movie. The thought of being sucked into a black hole was pretty scary, particularly because the science of the black hole was only in its infancy. Even with today's scientific advancements, the phenomenon that is the black hole is still frightening. But it's not as scary as Maximilian was. He was more terrifying than Darth Vader, probably because he didn't talk. There was no humanization of him, no one person under the mask, and he had those spinny death blades. But it was Vincent, voiced by the great actor Rodney McDowell, that held a special place in my heart, and that is why I chose to do a full-scale build of this famous sci-fi robot. Now, how should I make him? I better do some research. I went on Facebook and joined the Vincent Builders Group. Who better to learn from than a bunch of people who have already made a Vincent? And what I learned is that most of them used a 3D printer. What? I don't have one of those, nor do I have access to one. Time for plan B. I have had success using styrofoam for previous projects. The collar for my Mr. Freeze costume and the base structure for my Rocketeer's rocket pack are both made of styrofoam. They've held up well, they're lightweight, and they're easy to carve. Now I may not have access to a 3D printer, but I do know a guy that owns a CNC router, and I bet I could get the foam carved out by him. So I went to visit my friend Peter Upfield at his shop, the Iron Easel in Lake Hamilton, Florida. I discussed the project and what I had in mind. Then I asked what were the possibilities or limitations there were with routing. The advantages definitely outweighed the cons, but there was one hurdle. More like a very high wall. We would need a 3D file of Vincent to be able to carve them out. All of the files that were available through the Vincent Builders Group page on Facebook were meant for 3D printing. They were broken up into sections and did me no good because I needed the whole thing. That's when I remembered a video I watched while researching all I could on Vincent. On YouTube, there was a video called Vincent Time Lapse. It's roughly an hour long of someone who built a 3D model of Vincent in the computer using Blender software. It's fascinating to watch the design process as someone who is not familiar with digital models. And there was my aha moment. Eureka! I need a 3D model of Vincent. And here's a guy who's made a 3D model of Vincent. Hopefully he still has the file. With nothing to lose, I reached out to the artist. It was under Daniel Brainbox. And to my delight, I got a reply. I come to find out Daniel lives in Germany, and he was willing to help me with my project. And this is the digital model he sent me. So it goes without saying, if it weren't for Daniel, my Vincent project would have been dead in the water. Daniel, thank you so much for your talent and your generosity. I'll make sure to put a link to your YouTube page so others can discover your talent as a digital artist as well. Step one was complete. I had my 3D model. Now I just needed the styrofoam to carve. If I were to purchase the regular two inch foam insulation from my local hardware store, I would have to buy six sheets of four foot by eight foot. That's a lot of foam sheets. There's gotta be a thicker foam out there. And there was. I could get six inch thick four by eight sheets from a construction supplier. 
Now I only had to buy two sheets of that and get them delivered to Peter over at the Iron Easel. That's two steps down, with God knows how many more before the project was done. But I had my model, and I had my foam, so at last the routing could begin. I say that, but we still need to figure out the best way to carve Vincent out of the foam. My brain naturally thought the best way was from the top down. We carved the crown or helmet first, then his head, face, and etc., layering every six inches. Turns out, I know nothing about carving. You know nothing, Jon Snow. The best way to carve Vincent was vertically. To ensure we could capture the details of his body, we would split him right down the middle on his side axis and work out layering every six inches. With that solved, routing began. The process took about three days, and when Peter was done, we had enough styrofoam bits to make our very own Hoth landscape. Next, I would need to glue all of the vertical sections together. I started from the inside out, using a spray bottle to lay a light mist of water on the surface before applying an ample amount of Gorilla Glue. Once I had put the sections together, I held them in place by using masking tape and bamboo skewers as the glue expanded between the joints and dried. I repeated these steps until I had a complete Vincent. The process took about three days. Well, today is sanding day. Uh, all the layers of Vincent have been put together from the route. And what we're going to be doing next is going to be sanding down all the, doing a soft sanding, just trying to get rid of all the topography lines that were created from the router. And then once that happens, then I'm going to do a nice uh, base coat and then going to sand it again, fill in any cracks. Uh, we had some instances where the router just couldn't reach the certain details, so I actually have to go in with my Dremel and fine tune where things are going to go. So, so far, this is Vincent putting together in all of his glory. After the first sanding, it was time to start the repeated process of priming and filling, followed by more sanding. The base primer consisted of a mixture of latex and water-based primer, then spooning in a light joint spackling compound to create a milkshake-like consistency. I let that dry overnight. The next day, I would fill in the cracks and voids with dry X pink spackling. I would then let that dry for another 24 hours. I would then sand the whole thing. I would repeat these steps three more times to get the surface as smooth as possible. Once all the sanding and filling was done, I had to go back to hand carve the surface lines with my Dremel and routing attachment to make sure that I did not cut too deep. For placement of these lines, I used reference photos of Vincent from the movie. I made sure to sand off any burrs and rough spots left behind from the Dremel. Now the one thing that everyone knows in the craft world is that spray paint will melt styrofoam. That's the catch of working with foam. But there are ways around this. It's called hard coating. Basically, you're taking a water-based sealant to protect the foam. Now I know that there are epoxies out there that are really good about this, but I was under a budget and time constraints. So I ended up using wood glue. That's right, regular wood glue. Now, it applies like paint, but you gotta be careful because gravity will kick in and those eventual drips will occur. But there's also a benefit of wood glue. You can sand it once it's dry. So, once I was finished hard coating, it was time to give Vincent one more layer of protection. This decision I would later come to regret. I covered Vincent in three cans of Plasti Dip spray. Now, at the time, it looked great and gave a nice smooth finish. So, with Vincent ready for painting, it was time to visit Peter one more time over at the Iron Easel. Now, not only is Peter skilled with a CNC router, but he is also an electronic genius as well. Because while I was doing all that sanding and filling, Peter was creating the lighting effects that would take this prop build to the next level and beyond. Knowing where the lights would eventually go, I had made channels in the foam body that would hide the wires that controlled the LED lights. There are six sets of individually controlled LED panels on Vincent. The four on his collar, the lower light bar, and the main screen panel. All of these are controlled by a central processor that is powered by two rechargeable batteries. The control box is connected by Wi-Fi and I can even change the light settings with my phone. I can't say enough about Peter. He is a genius in my eyes. 
Now, unfortunately, while he was giving me all the information, all the technical specs, some of it was going over my head. Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I would catch it. But with practice, I'll get better at it. It was time to break out the spray paint. I knew that I wanted at least two coats of paint. I bought six cans of hammered silver. I ended up using four. Vincent was so shiny, he looked like he just got off the assembly line. Now that it had to dry for a minimum of 24 hours before I worked on the red spray. The next day, it took over two hours to mask off the sections with blue tape and trash bags to protect the silver from where I was going to spray the red paint. I chose Krylon Gloss Cherry Red for that color. After an hour drying time, it was safe to remove the masking. Remember when I said I would regret using Plasti Dip? The Plasti Dip did not adhere to the glue hard coat like I thought and peeled up with the tape in some of the areas. So I recommend finding another option for prep for painting. Anyway, I didn't let that slow me down. Full steam ahead. Since spray painting was complete, Vincent could be brought back inside for the final touches. All the other areas would be hand painted. I used craft matte acrylics from the craft section at Walmart. Matte black and light mocha were used for the, some of the panels and the insets of the body sections, while matte white was used for his eyes. Once all the paint had dried, I traced out the panel sections on paper so I could generate Vincent's labels and markings in Photoshop to be later cut out of black and red vinyl to be applied directly onto the prop. The final touch was gluing two black buttons for Vincent's eyes. For display and general moving Vincent around, I constructed a base made of layer wood with a max diameter being three feet across. I used five rollerblade casters placed in a pentagon pattern to ensure it would not tip over. To give the illusion that Vincent is floating, he is mounted on a two inch diameter acrylic rod. That rod slides into a two inch PVC pipe that is secured in the base as well as the underside of the robot. Two and a half weeks after this project had begun, I had a complete full size replica of Vincent from the black hole. And what better way to debut Vincent than at a sci-fi convention? Every year, the city of Bartow, Florida holds an outdoor event called Sci-Fi Bartow. It's a one-day, free event held on the streets of downtown Bartow. This year's theme was 2020 Rise of the Robots. I knew Vincent would be popular, but he took a little coaxing. Vincent, you're going to have the time of your life in there. I don't mean to sound superior, but I hate the company of robots. As I hope, Vincent stole the show. I had set up a photo op complete with a black hole backdrop and life-size cutout of Maximilian. Both young and old loved Vincent, and most my age were taken back to their childhood and our mutual fear of Maximilian, and we all agreed that he's still the most evil robot of all time. All day long, I answered questions on about how I made them, how long did it take to build, and what is he made out of? But mostly, I enjoyed the looks on people's faces as they stared and smiled through their masks and snapped a picture of their childhood. And then as they walked away, I heard, I'm going to make my kid watch the black hole tonight. And that's it. That's how I made a full-size replica of Vincent from the black hole. Now, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And thank you for watching.